May 2015, coming towards the end of spring and after a mild winter it's turned out to be a bit of a cool spring so we're hoping that things, the weather will get, be getting better over the coming weeks but we are well into our springtime activities as we seek to become self-sufficient. You finished eating from the bag. things that we can do in the spring is to feed our animals grass and dandelion and other leaves that we can pick wild and that uh, helps us to cut down on our food costs, cut down on our food miles as well, or certainly our animal feed miles and uh, it provides them with a really good nutritious feed uh, and of course it's free which uh, always interests us as well. Now uh, Pinky here we've had one or two problems with over the past couple of weeks because she was due to give birth a couple of weeks ago and it all went horribly wrong. Uh, sadly we lost the two kids uh, and they had to be born by caesarean section. It was a bit of an emergency operation in the middle of the night and a couple of times we thought we were going to lose Pinky as well but uh, as you can see uh, she has pulled through, she's got a healthy diet have a healthy appetite, eating well, and uh, we're now milking her as well. So we're getting two, meter, two litres of milk a day. Our other two goats, Geraldine and Georgina, are uh, doing well, but uh, sadly we weren't able to get them mated in the uh, in the winter, so we have to wait until the autumn to get them mated. And any kids they produce, we'll be looking to use for meat. That's Pinky's goat house there. Built it from few garage doors and a bit of uh, boarding that we were able to get and a good size in there. Time for a lie down I think. As you can see her udders are filling up quite nicely. So anytime soon we'll be on to making cheese and butter. We're on our allotment at Marley Hill. Now this is the allotment that we use for our vegetable growing. Down on our main allotment where we keep our poultry and our goats, we've discovered that poultry and goats and vegetable growing don't really mix too well. So we never get any very good crops, we need any crops when our chickens manage to beat us to them. So we do all our vegetable growing up here. Now this is a very small allotment and unfortunately uh, it also needs an awful lot of weeding. Now this is the bottom of the allotment and believe it or not this is an onion bed and this is where we've allowed the weeds to get completely out of control. There are onions in there, which we're going to have to rescue by doing some thorough weeding, but there's also a lot of thistles in there. And one of the good things is that my goats love thistles. So the thistles will be used as feed 
for our livestock. Between the main bed and the second bed we have some soft fruit but also we have mint planted which has gone absolutely berserk uh, so we have absolutely mountains of it so it's trying to spread onto this bed here so we need to cut a lot of that back but watch this space because we've been doing an awful lot of cooking with mint. This is the main bed and we've got potatoes at the top there, obviously weeding needs doing. Uh, and then onions and garlic and then broad beans here and then this is the other end of the bed which is last year's cabbages. Now most of those cabbages are only good for the hens and the goats who will quite happily chomp their way through all of them. We're here at our house and we're upstairs and our house is a, an important place for our food production as well and in front of me is our spare room and that's the room that we use for incubating our eggs. At the moment we've got three quail chicks that are now ready to go over to the quail house on the allotment. Uh, they're about, um, about three weeks old now and there's about another month to go and they'll be fully grown. Uh, they do grow rather rapidly but they're ready now to go outdoors because if we just put the camera over here we need their space for what I hope will be more quails hatching in the next day or so. They are now been taken out of their cradle in the incubator to stop them turning and with a bit of luck we'll get a few more quails hatched ready for them to go to the allotment in about a month's time. This is the self-sufficiency kitchen and we've got a number of things going on here at the moment. May is really the start of the preserve making season so we have in the preserving pan at the moment some orange and lemon marmalade. Now admittedly we don't grow the oranges and lemons ourselves but it's always useful to have marmalades for swapping with other people. That's a bit more of the liquid that's going to go into the marmalade and next to it any guesses as to what this is? It's actually whey from our goat's milk and we've been cheese making and this is the byproduct of it. Some of that will be put into the chicken's mash but some of it will also be used to make soup so nothing is wasted. And here we have our little cheese press and we've just put the bit of cheese in there or a bit of curds in there which is being pressed slowly to make a hard cheese. This is the patio in our back garden and we've got these potato bags but we're actually using them to grow cabbages and leeks. But we've also got on the patio our strawberry pots. Not a massive crop this year so we may be looking to do some swaps with people to get more strawberries. We have one hen who at the moment we're keeping in our fruit cage and uh, that one hen has eight chicks and three of them she hatched herself and five came from the incubator. So she's uh, very protective of them. We've got eight ducks and four drakes at the moment and now two of the drakes are surplus to our requirements and therefore they will end up at some point as a Sunday dinner. We've 
got a number of surplus cockerels at the moment so we can't really keep them uh, we've got three that we don't want to keep we found a home for one which means that two will also be going for dinner at some point this is inside our quail house and we have 13 quail uh, two of them are males and yesterday the hen quails each laid an egg so it's the first time this year that all 11 have laid and normally they're quite prolific layers so we're expecting soon to have quite a big supply of quail eggs this is our herb garden it needs a little bit of weeding down to it and we've got lots of sage over there and we've got rosemary uh, fennel oregano one or two soft fruit bushes in here as well Yeah, on the other side of the herb garden we've got this fantastic lovage growing and this can be used both as a herb uh, and as a vegetable. Uh, you can use the stalks. Um, the leaves can be used in salads as well. Makes a great soup. It's quite a bit of horseradish. Now, in the autumn, we'll dig up the roots and we'll use some of the goat's cream to make horseradish sauce. This is our raspberry bed. Coming along quite well. So, hopefully we'll have lots more fruit for jam making. We're on one of our two apiaries now. We've got uh, five hives here on this apiary. We did have six but one of them died over the winter and we did an inspection a couple of weeks ago and just found a pile of dead bees in Well, We were expecting that because there's been very little activity on the hives. Not a great deal of activity today because the weather's not too good but the bees you can see are bringing in pollen so that means they've got lots of brood to be feeding. We've put supers on a couple of the hives as well to start collecting the honey for uh, the summer. These are some potato bags that we have from last year. We actually didn't get round to cropping the potatoes from them so they've started growing again uh, so we've just left them to it. Uh, but we've piled up some earth and manure in the bags. Not helped by the fact that our hens occasionally visit them. So we'll be putting netting over to stop that happening. We've had to put a mini fruit cage over our gooseberry plants here because Pinky, our goat, was helping ourselves to the leaves. Had to do the same here with the horseradish. The guilty culprits in this time were the ducks and the hens because Pinky isn't really interested in horseradish. Well, this is the inside of our greenhouse and uh, <laughs> there's really a number of nettles growing but uh, most of our seedlings have now gone up to our allotment at Marley Hill. So that's it for May 2015. Join us next month when hopefully we're going to have a huge quantity of goat's milk to have to deal with. <laughs>